The question now, of course, is where else shall we connect those corrective plan shapes to? To be able to connect the corrective shape to the pose of a joint and not to its rotation, we need to create another node for that. We select the joint where we want to check the pose for first and then we go to the deform menu and here to the pose space deformation and the create pose interpolator. As you can see, this creates a new node for us in the outliner and this node tells us about the pose of the joint. To have some more information about that, we need to have another window open. And this window is called Pose Editor. Let's open this. You can see this is rather big, so we have to get more space for our viewport to see our character. I do that by pressing Ctrl and Space. In here you can see the Pose Interpolator node created before. You can select that and get some options. First of all, before I can tell you about those, what we have to do is to create another blend shape for the hip and directly connect this blend shape to the already created pose interpolator. What we do here is exactly the same what we did with the blend shapes before, but we do that now in the pose editor, not in the shape editor window. So let's go to a pose where we want to create a corrective blend shape for something like this probably and then we click on the button add pose here similar of what we did before in the shape editor this opens another window for us asking if we want to create only a pose or also a blend shape so this is what we want to do so we have to check the create pose shape button or make sure that this is already checked next thing that we have to check is we are choosing the right blend shape deformer. In our case, we already create a blend shape deformer for the knee deformation, so we can choose it from that list. If you wouldn't have created a corrective shape deformer already, then you would have to check new in here. Then we click on create pose shape. When you increase the window size even more, we have approximately the same view that we had in the shape editor. So we have an edit button here, which we have to check that this is turned on. And then we can, without any risk, start to model on our object here. Because all the deformation goes directly onto the blend shape, which was created and connected to the post deformation. So that's your turn. Just model as long as you are pleased with the shape. When you are finished modeling that shape, don't forget to turn off the edit mode. So, let's have a look at what we have created here. Now when you are rotating the joint, you can already see that the blend shape is triggered. So that means when you see that the value of this pose that we created is turning from 0 to 1 while rotating the joint in the right pose, the blend shape is triggered too. And we have a nice deformation when we are reaching the pose. The same actually you could already have done with the knee as well. Question, why did we do all this manually then? The answer is simply that you have to do that manually once because otherwise you wouldn't understand what comes next. And next comes we have to adjust the things that we did so far in the pose editor so that this is working properly. Because for the moment what you can see is the following. When we are right clicking on any pose which is in there, we have the chance to set this pose directly. So we can say go to pose neutral and then we are in the neutral state. When we click on this and say go to post, then we are back in this post where we created the blend shape for. Let's go back to the neutral pose. And what you can see here is that, for example, when we are twisting the leg, this blend shape, which we created before, is triggered as well. This is, of course, nothing that we want to do. What we have to do to fix this is we have to have a look in the advanced settings of the pose editor. So we go to view, advanced. To understand the settings here, you have to have at least once gone through all the process of creating twisting joints and corrective blend shapes and their connection manually. What we have to check here is we have to choose the right twisting axis. 
The twisting axis is the one which is used to do the twisting rotation. And what you can see here if you are reactivating the rotation tool by pressing E on the keyboard is that the green axis is the twisting rotation, this one, and the green axis is the Y axis. So this is what we have to set in here. As soon as we're doing this, you can see that the triggering of the blend shape is gone. So, so far, so good. Let's go back to the neutral pose again. And now let's check the other axis. So now that we have set the twisting axis right, all of a sudden the blend shape is now also triggered when we are doing the other rotation channel, the X rotation channel. And to understand what we have to do here to avoid this, you have to begin through the setting driven key process before, because what we have to do now is pretty similar to that. Let's go to the pose again where we set that corrective blend shape. You can see that this is an angle of approximately 90 degree, actually exactly 80 degree, which you can see here. This is zero in X, zero in Y and 80 in Z. When we would have set driven keys, we would have set this value of an 80 degree rotation as being the maximum driving value. And this is exactly what we have to do here as well. And to do that, you have to check this so-called independent option. And then you set this value to exactly the angle that you have set up there. Now, when you are rotating this, we can see that we are back at zero when we are in a approximately neutral pose. And when we go up in the x-axis, we have avoided the triggering of that blend shape here as well. 